Hello there folks, Andy Boy here. Now when I started this channel I kind of wanted to do a lot of videos about Dungeons and Dragons and other role-playing games and that sort of thing. Unfortunately, you know, somewhere along the line I kind of got out of D&D. Yes, it's true. There was this kind of thing that happened, um, it's called a global pandemic that kind of prevented me from playing Dungeons and Dragons in person. Tried the online thing, didn't care for it, and it's been a really long time since I've sat down and played an RPG with my gaming group, which I don't even know if it still exists or not right now. I mean, it's a loose message board of friends that uh, you know we've played in the past and we would like to play again. We're never sure when we're going to be able to do so. Since it's been so long, I've had time to reflect on it and think about the fact that, well, Dungeons and Dragons isn't the only RPG out there. It's not the only game that you can gather your friends together and play. Uh, in as a matter of fact, you know, my gaming group we've, you know, sometimes diverted to other games, and it's been great. So what I want to talk about today is five great games that are not D and D. Okay, of course, I got to mention this one. Uh, I did a whole video on Marvel Super Heroes role playing game back in the day, and I went through the rules and you know general overview of the game and how it plays. And let's just uh, sum it up really quickly here. Marvel Super Heroes role playing game. You're Spider Man or Captain America or the Thing or the Hulk or any Marvel hero. And it kind of plays the same way as D and D. You get, you know, there's le less role playing in this, and a lot more combat, super powery action. It's a lot of fun. It's something that I've, uh, you know, shortly after I started playing D and D back in the day, I played this, and for the longest time, this was my go-to game. This was the only RPG game that I played. Uh, until I got back into D&D a little bit later. This is only one of uh, about three or four superhero role-playing games that I've played, and uh, the simplicity of it makes this one my favorite. And, of course, you know, because Marvel Comics are way better than DC Comics, this, it plays pretty fast. You don't really have to worry about making your own characters, but you certainly can. But it's way more fun to use Spider-Man or Captain America and those kind of guys. Yeah, it doesn't take too long to learn. It's a sim simple playing game. It uses two ten-sided dice, uh, percentile dice, and everything is resolved using one universal table. Anyway, like I said, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this one because I already have it back in the past. Marvel Super Heroes role-playing game. If you can find this, pick it up. Then I got this. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and other strangeness. I did play this game way back in the day. I uh, just recently got this rule book, though. And it's quite a game. It's um, a little complex. Uh, it plays a little differently than something like Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, it's mostly focused on combat, which is cool, but it can get really complicated. Um, making characters is quite a lengthy, involved process, but definitely worth it once you flesh out a character. Like, of course, you don't have to be a Ninja Turtle. You can create your own kind of anthropomorphic animal hero. Uh, I think it's got some examples in here. Yeah, you could be an armadillo. You could be a badger. You, uh, it gives you lots of suggestions here. I'm sure you can probably make up your own too. An urban animal like a dog, a mouse, rat, a turtle. Uh, you could be a rural animal like a goat or a sheep or a cow or something. Or you could be a wild animal like a wolverine or a weasel. You could be a bird, a wild bird. You could be a zoo animal. <laughs> like, um, yeah, the possibilities are endless. But basically, Let's say I want to be a bear with a sword. There's rules for that. 
Yeah, so you make up your own animal characters and you fight other mutant animals and you uh, basically kick ass kung fu style, I guess. Definitely an interesting game. Now, it's very different from D&D in that uh, it's a little bit more complex in the combat area. Uh, but, you know, if you're into that kind of detailed combat, I think that the Palladium game system, which this is based on, is um, definitely will give you that. So, yeah, check out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and other strangeness, if you can find it. Okay, this one's a go-to for me. This is Savage Worlds. Savage Worlds is a generic role-playing system. Uh, it's not as heavy on the role-playing as D&D or even Marvel Super Heroes, but it's really heavy on the combat. And the combat system in here is... Hey, what do you know? Andy Boy Comics and Toys. Check it out. Now, the combat system in here is pretty involved, and it's kind of made for, like, miniature miniature games, like um, miniature tabletop battles. And it does a really good job of that. It plays really fast. It's very different from D&D. It's uh, fast, furious, and fun. I'm pretty sure that's the tagline for this. Yeah, there we go. Savage Worlds Deluxe is fast, furious, fun. I agree. Uh, your character attributes are expressed in dice rather than uh, a static score. Uh, there's a very simple combat system where it's basically just got to roll over this number. To accomplish anything, you need to roll a 4. So you, if you, get a, you have a D8 in a certain attribute, you're more likely to roll over a 4 than, say, if you had a D4. The initiative system is really brilliant. It uses playing cards. Higher, better card goes first, that kind of thing. If you get a joker, you get bonuses. I really enjoy the exploding dice aspect of this game. Any die that you max, you roll the max number on that die, you get to roll another one and add it to that score. And it's infinite. If you keep rolling sixes on a D6, you just keep adding those sixes to your already existing roll. Yeah, give me 20 minutes to explain this entire game to you. And it's fast and simple. It's something you can you could play this in one night. You could have characters ready to go and be playing well, within, you know, half an hour. Takes about 30 minutes to make a character, uh, and that's basically just because you got to read and make choices on what kind of skills you want to have. Uh, it's not really a level based, it's not even hit point based. It's different, and it's fun, and it's fast, and it's furious. And being a generic system, you can apply this to any setting you like. So, what I did with it, I played Star Wars. I have a lot of Star Wars miniatures that I got from the tabletop game. Uh, collectible miniatures game way back in the day. I have a lot of those, so wrote up a little Star Wars story and used the Savage Worlds to resolve all the combat, and turned out great. I couldn't be happier with Savage Worlds. I think it cost me about $20 with shipping to get to my house. So it's very cheap to get. It's a pretty comprehensive rule book. And, but it's not super heavy on details. Because it assumes that you're going to make up the details of the role-playing and the, and the characters. And you're going to flesh out your character how you like to. And your scenarios and that sort of thing. But it does give, give you some basic examples. It gives you basic te character templates and sort of little adventure ideas. And, what can I say? It's something you don't need to spend too much time on. Game prep for this is minimal, and it's a lot of fun. You should check it out. Okay, here's an old one. Gamma World, a game that was produced in, uh, I think, the first time, like, 1978, or in the 70s, anyway. Gamma World, yeah. Following closely on the heels of Dungeons & Dragons, uh, this was originally a box set, uh, which I do have, but uh, I have it up for sale, as a matter of fact. An original box set that came with this rule book, with, with a black and white cover, and all these rules inside. 
yeah, Gamma World is a post-apocalyptic science fantasy game. Here's the basic premise of it. Um, civilization as we know it today has crumbled. Devastated by like plagues and nuclear war and chemical warfare and basically it's all about mutants. And I'm not talking like X-Men mutants where you have superpowers, although that is possible. I'm talking like weird mutants like, you know, you might have a third arm, you might have, you know, here's like a snake with human hands. Um, now, of course, you know, if you play D&D, you might recognize that as a yon T snake man. Well, here, here we go. This is closer to like Ninja Turtles kind of mutants. We got bunnies with guns. And then, uh, yeah, there's like weird mutations that every character has. Uh, like this one, for instance, has like wings and a beak and extra eyes and the, like leaping ability or something like that. This guy's got hands for feet and feet for hands. He is what you would call a hopeless character. Uh, so yeah, you basically, when you create your character, you roll randomly and you find out what kind of mutations you get. And then you go out on adventures and you try and survive in this hostile world of freaky mutants and radiation and, uh, you know, remnants of technology that you can scrounge up and basically make your own world. Gamma World. It's fun. It's very simple. It plays very much like the original Dungeons and Dragons with a few key differences. One of which being that uh, you don't have levels in Gamma World. You basically, yeah, you, your character can improve and you get like you know, certain points um, to spend on like either new mutations or uh, new skills, that sort of thing. This is the first edition of Gamma World. Of course, this is a reprint that I ordered uh, from Drive-Thru RPG. You know, it's dated uh, 1978 here. I think there's something like seven editions of Gamma World at this point. Uh, a lot of them got really weird and tried to adapt to different versions of D&D or also, uh, you know, different games. And other gaming systems have pulled up the concept of mutants and, and that sort of thing in a way to emulate this. But I think I'm going to try this just as it is, as the uh, first edition presents it. I might do a little tweaking here and there. I'm thinking of introducing uh, maybe exploding dice to this, uh, a la Savage Worlds. Also, I think uh, maybe the advantage-disadvantage mechanic from... 5th edition D&D would, would probably work pretty well in here. Basically, if you want to play a one-shot game where you don't really care what's going to happen to your character because you might die in like the first combat, um, I, I'd say go with Gamma World because you can always roll up a new mutant next time. And, you know, it's uh, that's part the most fun part of this whole game is making the characters. So... I say, go Gamma World. And lastly, here's a fun game. Toon, the cartoon role-playing game. This, of course, is a uh, binder <laughs> with the, the printed PDF. It's a very simple and straightforward rule book. It uh, is a really easy game to play, as a matter of fact. Uh, kind of funny that this is really more of a role-playing game than like a combat game you know you expect your role-playing to be like totally serious and stuff like that in Dungeons and Dragons or you know I guess it can be somewhat amusing but this it's supposed to be ridiculous it's supposed to be funny it's supposed to be like Looney Tunes your Daffy Duck or Porky Pig or Bugs Bunny or I suppose you know any other cartoon characters Tom and Jerry or oh my god the list goes on and on Yogi Bear Okay, I'm not coming up with that many examples, but you know what I mean. Cartoons, classic cartoons, where, you know, things like this happen in classic cartoons. You get, like, special abilities, and um, your character has general attributes. Um, 
It's uh, making a character probably takes about five minutes in this, probably less. Uh, here's the character sheet. Ooh, and I filled it out too, even with a picture. This is my cartoon character. It is his name is Wally B, and he's a wallaby. Yeah, I know I'm hilarious, right? He's kind of like a slacker stoner wallaby. Um, this is the stuff that he has. Uh, this is his attributes. He's obviously not very smart because he's got a one in smarts and a six in zip. Mm, three in muscle chutzpah, I believe is how that's pronounced. Is basically like his, uh, you know, it gives you like a, a main ability here and then it breaks it down into more specific things. So he has a three in muscle, but he can throw things really well. So he has an eight in throw. Uh, break down door, climb, fight, pick up heavy thing. Zip is like more of your um, agility kind of thing. Dodge, drive vehicle, your dexterity score. Smarts, which like I said, uh, I made this character really dumb so because he's uh, stoned out of his mind all the time. He's Wally B the Wallaby. And here's his description. He's a Yoda-sized kangaroo looking guy. Basically the dude in Wallaby form. Yeah, so... There we go. That's all you need to role play in a cartoon. And um, yeah, it's it's just really simple. It's if you like cartoons, you'd really like this game. This is tons of fun. I had this game since I think I was about 12. I lost my original rule book, which is why I ordered this PDF. This is one of my favorite role playing games. I haven't played it in a really long time, but I'm hoping to play it sometime soon. It plays very quickly. It's easy to learn. It's doesn't matter you don't have levels or anything like that so it doesn't matter how well you do in this game as a matter of fact it's it it's just all about being funny and having a good time and doing ridiculous things there's actually a lot of uh expansion material for toon you're not really going to find this stuff in like game stores or anything like that but you can find it all online steve jackson games toon look it up it's an awesome game it's a classic game it's uh, been revised i think a couple of times but um, the basics of the game are, have always been the same. Uh, you can play this with a pair of D6s, uh, so you don't need a lot of materials. Uh, basically, you need this book or the basic rules and uh, pen and paper, you know, and a couple of six-sided dice. And you can act out your favorite cartoon fantasies. Yeah, you go, man. Yeah, so... You know, when I eventually can get back into playing role-playing games and, and Dungeons and & Dragons and that sort of thing, I think instead of going straight back to D&D, &D, I'd like to kind of ease back into the RPG thing with maybe one of these games. Yeah, they're all pretty simple to learn, uh, with the exception maybe of the Ninja Turtles game. I think they'd be a lot of fun to play, especially as like one-shots going forward with playing RPGs for me in this current day and age uh, is going to be a slow start getting back into it because there's still a lot of restrictions uh, here in BC. Hey, one day we're going to get there and we're going to be able to get back into playing all our favorite games. And so that's why, you know, in this pause, the great reset, uh, the, the Thanos snap that we've all been going through, that's why I devoted a lot of my time reading up and, and looking into these other games because when we do get back to that point, I want to play all the games. I think it, each one of these is just as rewarding to play as Dungeons and & Dragons, and it's too bad that none of these get the exposure that D&D does. If you want to try something a little different than D&D, &D, I suggest looking up any one of these games. Uh, find them online. Um, in some cases, you might have to download PDFs, uh, or you can find the latest versions of said games. You know, um, hey... There's more to life than just D&D.